There's something about Korea that I'm extremely bothered by. It's not the people, well, sometimes. But what really bothers me about Korea is the portion of their food. Whenever I walk into a restaurant and order one serving of food, it's pretty much guaranteed that it's not going to be enough for me. Granted, they tend to be a little more affordable than the US or some of other countries. But at the end of the day, if I'm paying for one serving of food, I want it to be filling. But don't worry guys, in this video, I'm going to show you guys some of the restaurants where you can get a massive portion of food in Korea for a very reasonable price too. Why don't we start with the amazing noodle place that I'm standing in front of right now. Let's go inside, it looks authentic as hell. The restaurant that I'm going to today is called Gaiyoguksu, named after the biblical figure Gaius. Being known for its amazing value, this place was on Korean TV multiple times and many celebrities have come here to dine. I'm no celebrity, but today I'm here to try it myself. So this restaurant only sells noodle dishes, and all of their noodles are somewhere between 5 to $6, which even in Korean standards is quite affordable. For some reason, they allow you to bring in foods from other restaurants as long as they're not noodles. So I got their warm noodles with chives, and my friend got noodles with anchovy broth. So they have three different sizes, diet size, standard size, and the double size. Supposedly, their standard size is already big enough, and I didn't want to have any leftovers, so I decided to get the standard size. What's really interesting is the fact that regardless of the size, the price of the food is actually the same. And the noodles are refillable, so if you want more noodles, you can just ask for it and it's free. So in a way, this is like all-you-can-eat noodle experience. In return for the free size upgrade and refills, they ask that you make donations for the children in need if you can afford to. So that's my friend's Chanchiguksu. <laughs> How much seaweed is enough? Just a little more. This is so ridiculously huge. I don't know if you guys can feel the size of this. Big enough for me? I think so. Oh my god. Plenty of garlic chives, some radish, bean sprouts. These are yubu or aburage. Wow, that looks fantastic. I feel like this is a great business run by great people, but does the food taste great? And my god, it did not disappoint me. So this is not spicy. For the people that don't eat spicy or can't eat spicy, you're gonna be just fine eating this. Check out the freaking volume of the noodles. There's so much. Just looking at this makes me happy. While I was eating, they even gave me more soup to keep the noodle warm. Oh, yes, thank you. The price is too high, but it's too high. I really like their broth. I think this is also anchovy-based broth. So I would say this is about double or a little more than a double a typical serving size in Korea. I'm a big guy, I need lots of protein, lots of calories just to maintain my body. A typical Korean serving portion is just not enough for me. I always end up getting more food. I'm sure it's the same in your countries too. But in the recent few years, it used to be pretty easy to get yourself some lunch for $5. Now for a decent lunch, you would have to spend like $7, $8 easily. And that's a lot of money in Korea. Well, I'm glad to know that even in 2023, an everyday man like myself can afford to eat lots of food for a price of an extra scoop of guacamole in America. I like how they're playing Espa songs in this authentic restaurant. <laughs> I guess K-pop is authentically Korean too. It's just slightly spicy, like not enough to bother anyone. So many different ingredients, but that goes really well with this rice noodles. Ah, yes, I understand. So I asked for a little more noodles, free of charge, which I think is really cool. Ah, thank you. Oh, you're like a new one. Thank you. I thought they were just going to give me a little bit of noodles, but they pretty much refilled everything. Brand new soup, more seaweed, more chives, more aburage. It's like a brand new noodle. Oh man, after this, I'm probably going to explode. Food coma is going to hit me so hard after this. The owner of this restaurant is a Christian. And me, as a good Korean boy, I've been to a Korean church before too. Do you guys want to hear the story? Maybe you don't, but I'll tell you anyway. I might have told you guys this before too. So a long time ago, I was like in elementary school. I was like a first or second grader. 
It happened in Korea. I had a friend, let's just say his name was Harry. One day, he showed up to school with a Nintendo, you know, like, like a little handheld Nintendo, which at the time was insanely expensive. And I couldn't believe that he had it because as far as I know, Harry was poor. His family was like one of the very few actual poor family in the town. It's kind of like Kenny's family from South Park. So I walked up to him and I was like, where'd you steal that from, Harry? And Harry was like, oh, Jesus gave it to me. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I go to church every Sunday and my church gave it to me. I was like, oh, no way. Can I follow you to your church next week? He's like, of course, they're gonna love you. The following Sunday, I went to the church with him. I don't recall their routine. They did like some singing and storytelling and I wasn't interested. They gave us some Korean snacks, some choco pies. I was like, thank you for the choco pie. This is great. And then it looked like the church thing was over and I still didn't have my Nintendo, right? So I went up to the pastor, who thankfully didn't touch me inappropriately, asked him, um, I want a Nintendo too. Do you guys have one? And he was like, oh, Harry only got it because he's been here for eight years. I was like, eight years? I just couldn't see myself going there for eight years. That ended up being the last time of me going to a Korean church. As a fat little boy, I was like, wow, I'm not questioning Jesus, but he sure likes to take his time. Back to the food. I guess there's no point in describing the portion to you guys because it's refillable so it's like all you can eat but what i'll say is it tastes really good and it's very affordable this is the kind of noodle that makes me feel like yeah i have some authentic korean noodles so i paid with cash ended up with some cash there's a little donation box here for the children that are in need i'm not doing that well financially myself but i'm sure the children need it more than me well, there's a ton of people donating money to girls playing video games in their bikinis on Twitch. I'm sure this donation means more than that. By the way guys, I am also in need of your help. And listen, you guys don't have to spend any money on me, okay? But if you guys can, please go ahead and listen to my songs on Spotify. They're extremely relaxing. And every time you listen, Spotify pays me a little. So it really helps my channel. I'll be releasing a bunch of new albums for both of my playlists in November and December. So please go follow them. All right, let's move on to the next place. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I found an extra coin. Okay, let's give this to the children too. You guys will listen to my songs on Spotify, right? Thank you. Thank you. That's for the children. This time, let's go to this tonkatsu restaurant that's known for serving a huge tonkatsu. What's special about this place is that the owner of the restaurant is the Korean mukbang superstar, Tsuyang. I mean, she can definitely eat a lot, so it doesn't surprise me to know that her restaurant has a huge tonkatsu. So I'm standing in front of Tsuyang Tonkatsu. I hope Tsuyang doesn't disappoint me. The customers were waiting even before the restaurant opened, but let me warn you guys, popular restaurants are often very disappointing in Korea. As a fan of Tsuyang, I'm hoping that this isn't one of those restaurants. There's a little tablet that you can use to order. They're mostly known for their iconic Tsuwang Donkatsu. So we decided to get that and a little more just so that we're not hungry at the end. I think I'm gonna get this Tsuwang combo. Han bak steak 먹을래, cheese donkatsu 먹을래. Ah, cool. Oh my god, that looks good. There's also a little self-serving station. Here you can pick up some soup and a little bit of salad and other side dishes. They were playing Tsuyang's video on screen the whole time. I'm kind of a fan of her because I feel like she's a great person. I feel like as a human being, you guys all know Tsuyang. She's like the biggest mukbang YouTuber ever. She's this really cute Korean girl that can eat a lot of food. I believe she owns this restaurant and another restaurant that's next door. I know she can eat a lot, but is she a good business owner? Do they make great food? I will show you guys. I love the fact that they have a uh, Korean soup. It's like this egg and starch based soup that um, us Koreans serve with tonkatsu a lot. So my cameraman today, um, he's a friend from my military. Huh? They used to serve this in the military too. Like every Wednesday or something. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so these actually come in powder. You can get these from a supermarket and you just boil that powder and that becomes the soup. And here's our Tsuwang Tonkatsu. I don't know how big that looks to you guys. All right. So that's like $8. And now that's pretty big. Okay, that's the cheese tonkatsu with guacamole. I don't really see guacamole, but okay. 
the infamous Zhuang Tonkatsu. I give it to them, it's pretty big. And size is important, but it has to be backed by some level of quality. It's almost like cutting up a blanket. It's so big. All right, time to get a real taste of it. Is it good? You know what I will say is uh, the tonkatsu sauce. Uh, it's Korean style tonkatsu sauce. It's like the kind of sauce that I had with tonkatsu growing up as a child. The tonkatsu meat itself, yes, Korean style tonkatsu, they tend to be a little thin. But the meat here, the pork that went into this is like, I'm not here to hate, but it's like pretty paper thin. <laughs> hey, shut up. I love Tzu Yang. You can't hate on her. <laughs> no, seriously, I still love Tzu Yang. Here, you have some of these. Instead, let me have some of your guacamole cheese tonkatsu. There's about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of guacamole, which is kind of cool. Not enough, but there is some. But there is lots of mozzarella cheese. You know what? I like this. I like cheese. I like tonkatsu. And there's lots of cheese. Unlike the Zhuang tonkatsu, I would say their serving size is somewhat average. I love how it comes with some, some cabbage and macaroni salad. That's like mathematically proven. It's really crispy. Like I could hold this like a freaking cookie. Listen, I am not hating, but there are parts in this tonkatsu where there's like barely any meat. Granted, this is a very affordable tonkatsu, but I kind of wish instead of making it paper thin and why, maybe they could just double the thickness of the meat, have more meat in it, so that it really feels like a tonkatsu. Maybe charge people a little more, make it big, make it thicker. Sure, under 10,000 Korean won for a huge tonkatsu, that sounds iconic. Just in terms of pure dining experience, this isn't the best tonkatsu. I'm sorry guys, I really don't want to say negative things about it. <laughs> so if I had to mathematically break this down, it's about maybe 25% meat, like maybe 30% meat. And in my opinion, any tonkatsu should have a minimum of 50% meat. Just based on how much it is, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's more fun than good. Guys, it's not over yet. I got this oven spaghetti. Forgive me for slurping, it's a Korean restaurant after all. I feel like this spaghetti is okay. Um, the sauce and the pasta, they're like your average supermarket product. Supermarket spaghetti sauce and supermarket pasta noodles, they're good, you know, they taste good. And with lots of mozzarella cheese, this oven spaghetti, I, I feel like it's okay. Just considering its portion, I feel like the price is reasonable and I was generally happy with it. I wanna have that last piece of cheese tonkatsu that my friend didn't finish. So I feel like the cheese tonkatsu was my favorite at the restaurant, but I feel like at this price range, I wouldn't consider this to be affordable anymore. Before we go, I wanted to try their galbi hamburg steak as well. Is it hot? <laughs> the pan's actually not hot. It's just for the show. Let's get a taste of it. It's pretty thick. It looks juicy. It's very sweet. So this to me tasted like a huge Korean bulgogi flavored meatball. It was super tender and juicy. So I feel like if you're okay with your food being really sweet, this could be a solid pick for you. In fact, my friend thought it was really good. They also had these ice cream buckets that you can serve yourself with. And I'm not gonna turn down on free ice cream. It's like one of those ice creams that come in a bucket. I think Baskin Robbins has a competition. Do you want this? Oh, I want the I want the vanilla flavor. Mm, look how beautiful and white it is. Talking about beautiful and white, I heard that the uh, the next next Snow White is a Latina, which I think is very cool, very inclusive. I agree with the direction of Disney. That being said, I feel like if they really want to be like inclusive and and make it right for the people and the next generation, 
they should cast me as their next Snow White. Because I feel like if a Latina can be a Snow White, push that just a little more, an Asian man like me can become Snow White too. How great would that be? I'm gonna wait for their call because I feel like I'm beautiful enough. Oh, by the way, the ice cream tasted cheap and icy, but I got it for free, so I'm still happy about it. Is it the most delicious tonkatsu that you can find? Absolutely not. I would say this is kind of a fun place to visit if you're around the neighborhood, but it's not worth making a trip for. Okay then, hopefully the next place is not gonna disappoint me. Let's go, I still believe in Korea. I'm telling you people, it's not worth waiting for. All right, this time I want it to be a little more international and I've come to this place where they're supposed to have the biggest burger in Korea. The restaurant is called Jacobi's Burger and they have this one burger called God Buster. It's so large that they tell you to share between two people, but I'm going to try to finish it by myself. But Jimmy, you're Korean, you're in Korea. I thought you were going to show us some Korean food. Now, I may look Korean, but in here, there's a fat American man, and that man is dying to revert to his original form, morbid obesity. I've seen some great reviews about this place. Supposedly, their burger is not only big, but also quite delicious. You know, when a restaurant claims, oh, ours is big, it's like a man talking about his certain body part size. They claim that it's big, but when you actually look at it, it's honestly not that big. Hopefully that's not the case here. That's my friend's normal size burger. And here's my gut buster burger. It's a little bigger. I got mine with guacamole fries, which is awesome. All right, let's get a taste of this big, oh my God, it's heavy. Big, fat American burger. I don't even know how I'm going to begin to consume this. It looks like there's bacon, egg, onion rings, burger patty with lots of sauce and cheese, grilled onion, fresh onion, tomatoes. Oh, pineapple. That's, that's kind of weird. Some chili and more burger patty. Well, I don't know what kind of freak you guys are. I think this is big enough. It was so big that I couldn't hold it like a burger. So I had to tip it over and eat it little by little. Oh, where do I start? The bun was surprisingly good. It's really buttery and soft. It's like the only burger that I've seen in my life that makes me legitimately worry whether I can finish it or not. But I finished my secondary education in America, had my corporate job in America, and that taught me one thing, and that is consume sugar and fat like it doesn't have any health consequences. There is a lot to work on here. Talking about America, so I lived there for quite some time. And don't you guys feel like for somebody who's been there for a long time, I have a very strong accent? I find it a little weird too. Maybe there was a part of me that just didn't want to turn American. Hmm. Should I try speaking like an American person like right now just for the show? I feel like you guys will be entertained by this. So let me try this. I'll try to sound like a handsome American person, okay? This is coffee. Morning, Jeremy. How was your weekend? So my buddy, John, he got married to an Asian woman. Gorgeous woman. Her name's Hannah. Gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> By the way, I hope you guys don't feel like I'm hating on Americans because I love America. It's just that some of them, they have really funny traits that's like really funny to other people. Like they love talking about their Tesla. So my buddy has a Tesla. And they all love Asian women, which is good for them, I guess. But they hate it when I'm dating a white person. Like, they seem genuinely angry when I'm walking with a white lady. But I'll be honest with you, I enjoy that anger. <laughs> Are you guys like me? Because me, I'm the kind that likes to save the best part till the last. This is patty, cheese, this is hash brown, some bacon. The best part is here. This is supposed to bust my gut, but I'm actually feeling okay. Yeah, it's just another peaceful day in America over there. Since I don't sound American at all, would you guys like me to attend like an accent correction class? Let me know down in the comments if you guys want that. If you want me to erase who I am, then let me know. So to me, it felt like eating two to three burgers at the same time. I eat a lot, so it was manageable for me, but it's a lot of food for most people. So like I was saying earlier, I used to live in America, California, supposedly 
It's the most diverse, welcoming place in the world. And I lived in San Diego at one point. It's very like white people-centric society in San Diego. But let me tell you, these white people are very nice. They're not racist at all. They love Korean food. They love Japanese food. They voted for the right guy, they say. I was walking down the street, downtown San Diego, and next to me was a white person, a white girl that is a little younger than me. They're very, very gorgeous, believe it or not. Very, very gorgeous. And these American gentlemen that were eating pasta, they seemed really angry and upset at me. And I knew exactly why. So I held their hand to make them feel worse. Oh, and it worked. <laughs> Those gentlemen probably went home to fill up their clan application later that night. Okay, back to the food. I was very happy with the overall quality and the portion of the burger. It is on the more expensive side, but come on, you're getting a lot of food. I don't know how, but I finished it and I feel just fine. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some extra cardio later today. Hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching and go ahead and watch my other videos and listen to my songs on Spotify and help me pay for my food. Thank you.